What's going on guys, it's CTA Prime back here again. Today I'm gonna to show you how to easily install Windows 10 on your Raspberry Pi 3. Now this isn't Windows 10 IoT, this is a full blown Windows 10 for ARM. It works decently for the hardware, but as the title implies, it's buggy, it's slow, it's laggy, and it's pretty awesome. This is definitely not gonna replace your main desktop. There's a lot of apps that aren't working on here, but there are some older 32-bit apps that do work. This is mainly for people who have been wanting to try this out. Now it's easier than ever to install it. So if you're interested in running Windows 10 on the Raspberry Pi 3, let's go ahead and get started. There's a couple things we're gonna need. First up, you're gonna need another PC running Windows 10. I recommend being fully updated. Next thing you're going to need, obviously, is a Raspberry Pi 3 or a 3B+, and a decently fast SD card. I'll leave links in the description to Amazon for the SD cards I use. I'll also leave some links for a Raspberry Pi in case you don't already have one. So the very first thing we're going to do is take our fresh SD card and plug it into our PC. I have mine located here. I've just named it 32SD. Once we have that in place, we're going to head over to the links in the description. So this is the WOA deployer for the Raspberry Pi, Windows on ARM deployer for the Raspberry Pi. All the information you really need to know is here on this website. There are a lot of people who have been working on this and all of the credits are here. I don't know any of them and I'm personally not involved in this project whatsoever. I've just been really interested in Windows running on ARM and I think this is pretty cool and it's a really awesome start. From the WOA deployer GitHub, we're going to go to releases and we're gonna download the GUI. This is gonna go all in my downloads folder. Next up, there's another link. This tells you exactly how to get Windows 10 for ARM. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for all of these. We need to select type. We're gonna go with final version, select version. Now I have tried 18.9 ARM64, but I've got a lot of crashes. I've been more successful with 1803 ARM64. Now these numbers will change in the future, so you might have to experiment, but as of making this video, the one that's working for me is 1803 ARM64. I'm gonna make sure this is selected. Now I'm gonna select my language. You can go with anything. I'm just gonna go with English, United States. The edition, I wanna go with Windows 10 Professional. And finally, the download type. We're gonna go with this first one here. Download ISO computer in one click. So we're gonna click this. We're gonna get a little link over here. We wanna download this. I'm just gonna click keep here because I know exactly what it is. Now I need to head to my downloads folder or wherever you're downloading things to. And I'm gonna create a new folder in here to hold Windows because we need to run this batch file we just downloaded to download Windows for ARM. So I'm gonna name this 1803 so I know exactly which version it is. And I'm going to take this Windows command script that we downloaded and place it right in here. I'm going to go to that folder I just created, double click on the batch file, more info, run anyway. This is going to download everything we need into this folder. The folder I just named 1803, place the batch file in, give it some time to finish up depending on your internet connection. It could take anywhere from 10 to 30 minutes. Once this is finished downloading, it's gonna prompt you to press any key. Just press your space bar, it'll exit out of this command window, and we have everything we needed downloaded in the 1803 folder, as long as you named it 1803. So my download is finished up. Inside of that folder, we downloaded everything in. We're gonna get a disk image file. Right click, mount. We now have it mounted as a Windows install ISO. We're gonna back up to our downloads folder and we need to extract the WOA deployer. Right click, I'm just gonna extract it to its own folder. We're gonna open this up, scroll down a little bit, we'll find the EXE. It's gonna be the application, WOA deployer. Right click, run as administrator. From here, you need to be very careful. Make sure you choose the SD card to flash to. As you can see here, this would try to flash to my internal hard drive. I don't think it would do it, but just be safe. Make sure you're choosing your SD card. Mine's that 32 gigabyte SanDisk. From here, we're gonna click Browse. We need to find the install.wim. If it's not already listed here, we're gonna go to that drive we have mounted, 
sources, and it should be right in here, install.wim. Double click, triple check that you're flashing to the SD card we want to use, and we're just going to click deploy. Confirm deployment. Again, quadruple check that you're using the SD card. Click OK. This is going to download the UEFI we need. It's going to flash that SD card. You will be prompted to download one more thing, so you might have to keep an eye on this for a few minutes. TrueTask USB. This is the USB driver for the Raspberry Pi and Windows 10 on ARM. We're just going to click Accept. It's automatically going to download it and install it to the SD card exactly where it needs to be. Now you can walk away from the computer. This is going to take a little while to flash the SD card. It really depends on how fast your reader and card is. When the SD card is finished flashing, you'll be prompted with a screen like this. Done. There's also some instructions on how to set this up when we boot the Raspberry Pi up, but I'm going to go over those. It's all listed here if you just want to follow this. We're going to take the SD card from the PC, plug it into the Raspberry Pi's SD card slot. I'm also going to be using a keyboard and mouse, plug in HDMI, and power the unit up. Unfortunately, my game capture wouldn't pick this section up, so I had to film it with my camera. Hopefully it comes out okay. But the first boot, we're going to be prompted with a screen that looks like this. We can either press escape or type exit and then press enter. This is going to bring us into the UEFI manager. We need to change a few settings here. So here we are in the UEFI manager. First things first, we're going to go to device manager, press enter. Scroll down to Raspberry Pi configuration, press enter. Chipset configuration. And we want to change the CPU clock to max. So we'll press enter right here, scroll down to max. Make sure we choose max because if we don't, it's going to be at 600 megahertz. Press escape a couple times, you'll be prompted to save. Press Y to save. Back at the UEFI main menu, we're going to go to Boot Maintenance Manager. From here, Boot Options. Scroll down to Change Boot Order. Press Enter. From this menu, we need to press Enter one more time. We need to change the first boot to SDMMC. So we're going to highlight SDMMC and press the plus key on your keyboard. That's going to bring it up top. Now we'll press Enter. We're going to press escape a couple times. It's going to prompt us to save. Press Y. It'll bring us back to the main menu. Now we're going to go to Boot Manager and press Enter on SDMMC. Configuration changed. Go ahead and press Enter. It's going to start to boot up Windows 10. Now it's just like we're doing a fresh install on a real PC. We're going to have to set it up, put our name in, make sure you turn off as much stuff as you can. I turn off location and I also don't enable Cortana because we don't want anything else running in the background. Once you're finished with the configuration, it'll bring us right to the Windows 10 desktop and you'll be running Windows 10 on ARM or Windows 10 on the Raspberry Pi. And here we are at the Windows 10 desktop. I'm not going to speed anything up because I want you to see how this thing really performs. And I think performance really comes down to us using an SD card. The usage on this SD card is pretty much at 100% all the time. Hopefully somebody can come up with something a little better like running this from USB or a USB SSD would be even better. But then we still have the issue of only having one gigabyte of RAM on the Raspberry Pi. So as you can see here, we only have 300 megabytes free. And if I open up like an Edge browser, it goes down as low as 80 megabytes. Windows 10 does use a lot of RAM here, and we have a finite amount with the Raspberry Pi. Like I mentioned, this isn't going to replace your Windows 10 desktop, but this is an awesome start for single board computers running full-blown Windows 10. I just opened up the Edge browser. It is going to take a second to get up. But if we take a look at that disk usage over there, we're pegged out at 100%. I'm pretty sure that this is going to load a lot faster if we had faster storage. I do want to get into this and test a bunch of stuff out. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get Doom up and running. In the past, on an older build of Windows 10 for the Raspberry Pi, I was able to get ZSNES running. So I was running SNES games on the Raspberry Pi running Windows 10. 
which I thought was pretty cool. Now, as you can see, Edge still isn't fully loaded, but there is a lot of bloat on the main menu of Edge. So if you were to install a 32-bit version of Google Chrome, it would open up a lot faster. This has a lot of crappy news to load. And as all these images start to load, we're just using more and more RAM, and that SD card is just totally pegged out. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I wanted to get this tutorial out of the way because I had a lot of people asking about it. If there's anything you want to see running in Windows 10, go ahead, follow the tutorial, and see if it works. Most of the time, you will have to find some 32-bit version of an app. Older stuff seems to work a lot better. Like I mentioned, I did have ZSNES up and running, and that was an old, old emulator. So I'm sure there's more stuff that'll run in here. All links will be in the description, and if you need to purchase a Raspberry Pi and SD card, I also have some Amazon links down there for all the stuff I use. I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like button, maybe subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on things like this. And like always, thanks for watching.